The fastest car in 1930. 1932 Duesenberg Model SJ. Most automobiles in the 1930s had four-wheel hydraulic brakes. Hard-riding high-pressure tires were replaced with low-pressure balloon tires. The majority of cars had heaters and radios in the 1930s. Around this time, cars also started to develop smoother shapes and more aerodynamic designs, which reduced wind resistance. In addition to footboards, sunshades for the car's windshield, separate drum-shaped headlights and rear lights, connected to the car by connecting rods. American 1930s cars also included these features at the beginning of the decade. Headlights built into the car's frame, softened edges, and increased driving comfort all first debuted on American automobiles. The shell and radiator grille of cars from the 1930s were tipped back slightly, giving the impression that they were moving more quickly. Windscreen material was inexpensive security glass. Windshield wipers and low-pressure inner tube tires were first installed in American automobiles in the 1930s, mostly of safety precautions. For the lucky few who lived in luxury throughout the Great Depression, a wide range of automotive manufacturers in the 1930s also offered a growing number of sophisticated and elegant vehicles. New manufacturing techniques and innovations, such as the automatic transmission and the V8, V12, and V16 engines, as well as the emergence of automotive stylists like Harley Earl, were all used to produce the high-end automobiles of the 1930s. Due to the downturn, fewer cars were sold than in the 1920s, but a car's facelift, appearance, and design were crucial innovations to draw in new customers. The cars were dark, chromed, and sleek in design, which was extremely typical for the 1930s end. The 30s saw changes to these 1930s automobiles. At the end of the 30s, the car underwent a transformation from the traditional four-square styling that had predominated into the early 30s to a streamlined, teardrop-shaped car. We've arrived at the most interesting part of the video. The question at this point arises, but what was the fastest car in the 1930s? The answer is 1932 Duesenberg Model SJ. At the time, Duesenbergs with turbochargers were the best American supercars. When competing against the Mercedes-Benz 540K, Bentley Speed 6, Rolls-Royce Phantom Dew, Hispano Suiza G12, Bentley Speed 6, they team up with the supercharged studs, Cadillac B16, Packard 12, and Marmon 16 to defend American honors. It was able to produce 320 horsepower which was more than any other production automobile at the time thanks to its centrifugal, gear-driven supercharger. The eight distinct hard pipes you see on this automobile were the original equipment for the Model SJ, the supercharged variation of the J, when it made its debut in 1932. The so-called early hard pipes were only in use for about a year before being replaced with the four flexible stainless steel pipes that are present on almost all SJ and many J vehicles today. Duesenberg designed the company's successful racing engines of the 1920s, Lycoming 10, another business owned by Cord, produced the 420 cubic inches, 6,900 kc, straight 8 model G motor. It developed 265 horsepower, 198 kilowatts. In normally aspirated form, its highest speed was 91 miles per hour, 146 kilometers slash, and its top speed in second gear was 79 miles per hour. 127 kilometers a Although some cars had larger engines, none of them could match its power. The supercharged version, SJ, with 320 F, 239 kilowatts, which Fred Duesenberg developed on a 142.5 and 362 centimeters wheel days, it was able to generate a top speed of 104 miles per hour, 167 kilometers a in second gear and 135 to 140 miles per hour, 217 to 225 kilometers slash and third. Despite having unsynchronized transmissions, the SJ was believed to have 0 to 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers slash a, timings of about 8 seconds in 0 to 100 knot, 0 to 161 cam slash a, in 17 seconds at a time when even the greatest automobiles of the time were unlikely to achieve 100 miles per hour, 160 km slash a. The SJ supercharger was placed next to the engine. The vertical driving shaft required a new exhaust manifold arrangement, which was originally a one-piece 8 into one mono manifold that routed the exhaust away from the engine, outside the engine compartment, and through a single hole in the right front fender. 
The 8-port manifold was quickly replaced with a second manifold design that ran four branches through the right side panel of the hood and right front fender when it was discovered to be susceptible to braking. If you plan to buy one, you need to know that to date a 1935 Duesenberg model SJ Legrand convertible coupe J500 and 30 has sold at auction for $4,510,000. So unless you are a billionaire, this car can remain only a dream for the time being. Thanks for watching, subscribe and comment below.